Alright, so I'm getting ready to install the hot end section and here's the rudder uh, lead. I had to put an extension. Um, so let's see. Uh, you can see that I've locked it with uh, that a piece of plastic. And so what I'm going to do is encase this in uh, heat safe snake skin. And because the pipe's going to go through here um, and heat rises, I'm going to try to pass this wire sort of through um, these reliefs that have been cut in the fuselage and bring it to the front. So the uh, snake skin material I was talking about is this stuff. Um, and what this stuff is, is insiotherm, and this uh, shielding can withstand up to 650 degrees C of heat. So when I take the servo lead and all the other wires that are going to be in the hot end, I'm going to encase them in that material um, and then put aluminum tape over it to secure them to the fuselage and that should really protect that wire from any heat damage um, coming from the pipe. This. I'm gonna try and set this on fire and you can see it doesn't really burn. There's the flame and trying to burn it. Nope. Okay, so here's how I'm choosing to do the uh, shielding, heat shielding for the elevator servos. Um, I have my insiotherm, which is this guy, and that can withstand pretty high uh, heat. And then I have my servo wire, and then I have my plastic um, lock so that the extension and the servo stay together always. And then I have my second piece of insiotherm. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring these pretty close together. And then right at this junction, I'm going to use some aluminum tape. That's this stuff. It's pretty thick. Um, and I'm going to just like foil wrap that around so that that joint, one, is visible so I know where the server joint is. And B, just protects um, the remaining part because this insulation that I have is too uh, narrow to go over this bulky you know cable assembly so here's the uh, finished product you can see that insiotherm nice thick these are two layers of uh, aluminum tape that's pretty thick heavy duty and then insiotherm again and so this is how I'm gonna do both the wires for elevators as well as afterburner lighting installation wires as well. Uh, most of my wiring for the hot end is done. So this uh, aluminum tape in the middle here is wiring for the afterburners that I'll install later. And you can see that silver tape on the side of the fuselage there is covering and protecting the um, rudder servo wires and that goes all the way to the front you can see sort of see those cables on the side um, making their way up to the front so here's what the wiring looks like from the front you can see the wires coming from the back in insiotherm so on this side we have elevator and afterburner lighting and on this side, we have elevator and rudder wires coming through. So I'm gonna tape those and show you what the end result looks like. So here's the uh, one end of the uh, hot end. So I've taped the connections with uh, heavy duty aluminum foil tape. And you can see what's underneath the tape. So I'm gonna do the exact same process that I did here on this end. And we're gonna be ready to install the pipe thing before we close up the back end is um, the vertical stab gets uh, held on by um, this screw that's in the kit so I just added some washers and it's gonna go and there's a hole right in here somewhere so I'm gonna screw that in place then the vertical stab is gonna be secured and we will proceed with the hot end installation lifted the vertical stab just a little bit so you can see sort of where that screw pokes through and there's a receiving thread in the vertical stab so we're gonna push this 
um, and tire stab down and secure it in place. Something on my T38 as I was doing a final check. Um, the rudder, or rather the vertical stab, this guy, was fairly loose. I mean, it wasn't tight, but there was some play when I rocked it uh, sort of, you know, left to right. And the way this is attached is there is, let's see if I can show it in there, there is a single screw, that's that guy right there, that attaches the entire uh, vertical stab to the feet. So even with that screw tightened as far as I could get it and as hard as I get those still play. So what I had to do was get in here and um, and drill through that. So back to forth. So obviously the tube had to come out and I went through the back. So through right here. And you can see um, that screw drilled in. So that's an M3 drilled in through the carbon rod, through the brass sort of socket that, that's gonna hold the vertical stab and then secured with a lock nut um, on the opposite end. So let's see if I can show. So you can see the lock nut there in a washer. So now with that mod, the rudder and vertical stab are very rock solid and this still allows me to pull out the stab when I need to to service the servo. Done. So I figured what I'd do in this video is instead of showing people uh, random wiring videos, I'll just show you the components that I use and how I do this. Obviously you can see I get snake skin um, and I like that to insulate all my wires from chafing and then we have locking connectors. I'm going to show you in a second what those are and that's basically how I keep my wiring clean and a labeler obviously to label my connections. So here's all the stuff that I use. So we've got a few couple of crimp tools. I'm going to take this one off. And this crimp tool came along with um, this set. And this is basically all your servo connectors that you use on you know, your three pin servo connectors. I like that because I can cut wires to length and make them however long I want. Obviously I've got my labeler that's really nice because I can label my wires as you can see like in there and then I got my pliers I got my uh, stripper wire stripper and then here is where things get interesting because you can see on one end um, we have servo connections but on the other end we have locking connections and these are just Molex um, C-grid connectors DigiKey sells them um, and that's the female end or the male end and then here's the oppo opposing end. And basically, and basically that's what the second crimp tool, this guy, is for. Uh, DigiKey sells these. Um, you can also find that under, uh, when you look up these components, um, you'll find the accompanying tools for it. For it. But you don't necessarily need to do this, you can solder, I just prefer to cut wires and crimp them, it's just how I do things. Um, but these connectors then have, you get the, the pins that will then go into the crimping tool to make a secure connection. And so what happens is that at the end I'll have these beautiful wiring harnesses um, that make this plane easy to maintain. because. Remember I'm gonna attach the pin and these have like um, you can see those two sharp points at the tip so those will be for grabbing the wire I take my pliers and just gently push those two together so that it kinda sits in place you can see that that's not moving away from the wire and then I take my crimping tool and you can see I have marked with the silver sharpie the teeth that I use. And it's just a matter of positioning it in there. Nice squeeze. And you're done. Look at that.
nice connection. So mm. once the crimping's done, this is the easy part. You get your your plastic uh, housing, and you just snap everything in. So. Just get ground. Uh, this is power and signal. Boom. And you have your connector, and I'll just uh, give it a little twist roo And there, you're done. So I'm working on the wing harnesses for the T38 and this is what I've come up with. I'm going to show you before I stick them in the place. This is what's going to go in the fuselage and it's going to get glued on this wooden portion here to the fiberglass on the fuse. I'll show you what that looks like but um, essentially just MPX various variations of MPX connectors and again the top is where all my surf control surface wires will go through and the bottom is the bricks. I obviously have uh, three extra wires on the top and another two extra wires on here and that will allow me to add lights or whatever I want to later. And so here's what it looks like on the back end. Obviously um, that black MPX connector came finished. You can buy these from multiple places. I think Progressive RC or whatnot. This I made for myself. This is a Molex connector which is locking and I love that stuff because not only is it locking but you can see on the connector you've got these points right here. There's one, two, three, four and what those points are they're like test points so you can actually probe uh, the voltages and signals through that so that's pretty nice in addition to it obviously coming off and getting locked. So those are the two harnesses for the wings um, and I am going to go and glue those into the plane and my wing harnesses are going to be complete so what I need to do is then finish off obviously the second part of the harness which goes from these connections to my air smooth flight and or this connection uh, to my GS200 landing gear controller so more wiring on the T38 so I was able to get these harnesses for the wing um, and this one has six uh, what well, sorry this one allows for three servos so nine pins um, and what I need is flap um, aileron on here but I also have uh, electric brakes and electric gear Um, so actually while I'm here I'm going to point out that you can see how I wound up figuring out uh, the electron gear. So the Skymaster struts are a little bit too narrow but if you put M4 nuts um, where the uh, previously were none, so the electron brakes come with these four bolts or four uh, uh, screws here and the electron struts are wide enough to fit in between but because the Skymaster are narrow I was able to just add these um, uh, these nuts here and that apparently happens to be the perfect size to actually get your Skymaster strut in there so I'm not going to be able to use the electric brakes which is great so that means that I had to have a second connector because obviously I wanted to keep all the surfaces separate. So three wires for the flap, three wires for the aileron, um, and then four wires, two for the brake and two for the gear. And you can see them here. I've labeled everything I'm using an MPX connector. And basically these are just going to poke out through this section here and that's how they're going to plug into the plane. Here's the final product. Um, I have my wires encased in snakeskin and the connectors are sticking out. And those guys are going to go uh, right here. I'm going to mount the receiving end in there. I'll get that done and uh, we'll come back. 
gonna go in there like so. It's gonna get glued from the inside and then the wings will plug into that. So here's a shot of what that looks like. So that's the inside of the jet and I'm gonna maneuver there and you can see that's the connection and all the wires are currently just hanging loose and once I'm ready I can wire the rest of it so I'm pretty proud of how that came out what's left now is to put epoxy around uh, the edges there so that um, that block of wood that's holding my connectors doesn't move so here's a final uh, product so I'm gonna zoom out um, and that's the plane this is the wing and basically um, this is gonna mate I'll start with the bottom. So that's the, the brake cable. It's gonna go in there like that. It's properly seated. And then the top cable. And so you can see that's a nice mate. And then this will just get pushed in. And that's done. That's a wrap. So the wiring on the T38 is pretty much complete. So I'm just gonna show what I did um, and then it's time to put the fuel system in place. So starting from the top. So we have a pitot tube that's wired inside and this is just a spectrum airspeed sensor and you can see um, that right there. And so the tubes come in and basically the wiring here is fairly straightforward. I have everything ensleeved in uh, snakeskin just because I want to protect it from chafing so that when I use zip ties I know that the wires are going to be protected. So we basically have the wires running in, they go to my TM1000 which is a telemetry module that I'm using on this jet um, and then from the TM1000 um, we have obviously my landing gear controller because this jet is fully electric um, I also have, you can see one of my satellite antennas there and I'll get to that in a minute and then here's the cool part, is that I have these lockable connectors. Um, these are just Molex uh, connectors I've talked about earlier. And these are really great because this jet is fairly long. And so I might be forced to undo these bolts, these four bolts during transportation so that I can have the nose separate from the rest of the fuselage. And so it was a requirement for me to have any connections coming from the back to the front be disconnectable. So, so one satellite is the one I've just shown you that's all the way in the front there. The second satellite is at the top of the plane right here. The third satellite is obviously down here. And then the fourth one sits all the way. So that's the fourth antenna. So if you look at how these are oriented on the plane, I tried to cover every particular spot. So we have one antenna, one satellite receiver here oriented up and down. Then we have a second satellite on the bottom oriented a sort of flat with one antenna pointing back and one orthogonal to it. So that's side and bottom. Then we have a third uh, receiver on top here. You can sort of see the antenna wires. It's kind of hidden up here. So that's on the top side. And then we have a fourth um, satellite on the far end of the plane. So that way I should have enough orthogonality between all these antennas and wide enough placement that I'm hoping I will be able to get good signal throughout. Ready to go. But other than that, wiring on this plane is pretty straightforward. It's a simple plane in the sense that there's elevators, there's rudder, there is flaps and ailerons. Standard um, plane, nothing too fancy. So that pretty much completes the, the wiring of the plane. Um, I'm pretty excited with how it came out. I have tested uh, the wiring, the servos, everything seems to work. So that's exciting.